Hello everyone, so today we'll be working on a new tutorial series of videos to help you build better and uh, know a little bit better the Telspire interface. We'll try in multiple videos to go through the full creation from the planning of an asset to the release of an asset as a slab or to share it to the rest of the community of the rest of the Telspire community. With that, we'll try to uh, also learn you a few tips, best practices, and uh, my design theories, how to make builds that are interesting and nice to look at. Obviously, those are my preferences and this is my style. What I will be trying to give are general advices, but you may want or like to do things differently and that's perfectly fine. That's actually the best way to do things is yours. It's a great tool to copy assets or to copy styles first to get an idea on how things works. But I would highly advise you to just go your own way if you have ideas and just experiment with them. I have also to disclaim that this guide or this series of video I've tried to work with a few builders, namely Toolbear and Lador to help me uh, with the content of these uh, videos on how, what to say, what tips should I mention and stuff like that. Hopefully I will make a good work of their advices and put everything in videos that make sense. We'll try to work on making an asset from A to Z, really the full pipeline, something simple something that's maybe not really characteristic or really advanced but the the main goal is really to show you the steps and explain them with concrete examples and with that we'll try to provide you with something that's at the end usable i'll try to send to make multiple videos so that you can get back to each topic or each main category more quickly on your end and you'll be able to uh, rewatch them and uh, just go through the content way easier. In this third video, not for you because we won't be building at all, we'll just go through the interface and camera tools of Telspire. It's important to master them quickly because you'll be able much faster uh, to build once you get them in proper hand and then that you understand them how they work. I've just taken a few assets there that I've made myself um, a few weeks earlier. So those are three houses uh, built in the same style. Hopefully I've tried to make them look somewhat decent and in the same type of building. And with them we'll just show you the controls and how to navigate the camera and everything uh, with much ease hopefully and you'll learn a few shortcuts. So to start um, you always need to know that by pressing F1 you get the controls that show up on the bottom left corner. It's always useful to have them in mind, obviously, but if you start learning the tool, you can always show them by pressing F1 and by pressing F1 again, they will be removed. The other F key, the F2, is also useful to get back to your grid origin points, meaning that if you get lost in the fog making your map, you can always push F2 and you'll get back right at the start. So this is the origin point of the grid and it will always be consistent and be the same. Um, a quick tip I can give you is to try to start your maps or the entry of your maps, your dungeon or anything, to, to start it there at the, at the origin point of your map so you're never lost and when players first load the board they won't have any issue finding the correct place. Then for now, we got the F7 key, which puts you in player mode. As you can see, I don't have any tools there anymore to build. So player mode allows you as the game master to see what the player sees. It can be a really powerful tool to understand if you have made any um, mistake or issue with figurines or stuff like that. This is a mode I mainly use myself as a builder to make screenshots because the UI is much cleaner, the user interface, but you can also use it uh, to play if you're in session. 
with the F8 key, you'll get into the builder mode or the game master mode. So this is the mode that will interest us most. I won't go into detail of the turn base exploration and cutscene mode as of yet because this is a building tutorial series and we will not take into account uh, or we will not look uh, further into the playing or how to play uh, Talspire uh, tips. So I will hopefully do a video on that later. Another shortcut you need to know is B for the build mode. And when pressing B, you are entering the build mode, meaning that you can now place tiles. This mode also brings up automatically the left panel, the building assets. So from that panel, you can quickly drop assets. You can at any time show or hide any panels by clicking on the icon to the left or to the right. Um, often I build with everything open because I, I like to trick uh, atmosphere and just bring everything but sometimes you need to remember it to hide everything so you get a much cleaner working board. Of course when you are not in building mode space or space bar just pressing it will bring uh, the dice interface as well as the session history building assets and unique creature on the left. You won't be able to build or if you take one, you'll go into build mode directly. The little shortcut you have to know to, to build, which is not the most useful to build, but it can be, is that by pressing tab once in the game master mode, you will get the game master view, which shows the grid. And if I bring any creature, I won't bring those one because I'm using them, but if you bring any creature, it will appear with an overlay, meaning that you can see them through walls, so it's really useful. And also if you maintain tab, you'll get the name to display. And this also works in player mode. I actually need to give me the permission to see it. So if I go into player mode with F7 and I maintain tab, I can see the name of all the figurines that are present on the board and that I have either control of or that my character sees. So now that we're in build mode, there is a few new icons that will interest us. There is the height volume that I won't talk much about or that we not even talk about in this series. This is um, something a bit different that we'll approach, I think, later. The most interesting interface is the toggle grid one. The toggle grid interface will show you the square grid on the floor that will allow you more precisely to either a place buildings because everything will stick to the grid as you see everything is aligned and just to calculate distances and everything. It's an overall really useful tool. But it does more because it also allows you when building to build stuff higher than the ground and to set the height. So there is like the, the grid and the grid height are the two most valuable tools when building. The way to change the grid height, you can either sample height from grid from this tool. And by moving the mouse on the assets, you can see that the grid is moving following the mouse. So I can left click at any time and it will set the height grid. With that, if I take any asset, you'll see that the asset will slide easy on this height. So it can be really useful to put things flying up in the air or just working on a defined height grade like a floor or something else. Another quick way to set up the grid height is move grid to camera. So right now, my camera, as you can see with the white circle that's a bit faint is currently set on the floor so when i say move grid to camera the camera the grid sorry goes to zero or the base floor of the map this is now that we'll look at the two sliders at the left of the screen the two sliders and there is a third one up ahead are used mostly to build if i go out of the building mode 
the orange slider will disappear. So the white slider is the camera slider. If I move it up or down, you can see that my camera height moves depending on that. You can see it really clearly if I zoom in, there the white circle, when it's inside the building, I don't see it anymore, I see it more faintly. Then I can go up and it will appear, meaning that my camera is now outside of any block, so I can see it. When I do that, I can simply click move grid to camera and the grid will move to the camera. It's as easy as that. I can also move the grid with the orange slider. The orange slider means that it's like the building grid, which is the same. So I can move it like that. Currently it's a bit finicky. You need to be really precise, so I don't use it much, but it can be useful just to go quickly up or down and if you want to use it. So let's go back to zero again. And then we'll look at, at the third slider. The green slider is the cutoff slider. This will allow you to see inside buildings better. So I can bring it down and you will see as I go down the building get cut. Starting from the top and going down as I move down the cursor. This is really useful to see inside buildings or to see just inside the ground or anything if you want to check if there is any, any assets or any issue with your building. You have to remember with the green slider that if you are zoomed out too far, it will not display. So look at when I zoom in, it cut off again. And when I zoom out, it comes back down. Now you can get all of this done much faster with the mouse click. If I double click somewhere with the left click, it will center the camera and set the camera height. So if I double click on top of this house, you see directly my camera has moved in height and in position in space. This is really easy to determine a height with a grid really quickly. I can always be at the correct spot. You can also move the green slider the same way really quickly by double clicking somewhere where there is something above it. So if you look at it like that, there there is nothing above it, so nothing to change. But if I double click here, the game will move the green slider accordingly for around one wall height to show you the current floor that you've selected. If I double click here, you see that the green slider does not move much, but if I click here, it will show the next floor. This is a really powerful shortcut to quickly double click inside building and set correctly your camera and the green, green slider to be able to work effortlessly inside of buildings. And the last, the last, sorry, and the, the last tool tip and shortcut with the camera and probably uh, the one I love most when I found it is that you can simply maintain left click and right click to set the grid height. This means that now you don't have ever to move your mouse outside of your building area to fiddle with these sliders. You can directly right click somewhere, double click in a building and everything will slide automatically. There you see that my camera height is set at the floor of this house. My grid height is set there and the cutoff slider has go down by himself when I have double click here but I can just zoom in and it will reveal the inside of the house. Regarding the grid, we often just say that one block, one square is one by one and one tile is half of that. So two tiles made one of height. So one by one by one. The grid can move by increments of 0 0.25 or quarters of a block grid block, grid square, as you would prefer to call it. So you can set the grid here, or here, or here. So you see you have a lot of fine tuning you're able to do. And with that process, you can place everything really easily. The next things you need to learn is how to move the assets. There is a few way 
to move the assets in that spire down with shift. Without shift, you will drag the camera with right click. You will rotate the camera with middle mouse click. And you will make selection with left click. When maintaining the keyboard key shift, you will enter the selection mode or the tile mode. And with that mode, you are able to clearly pick any tile. So if I make you a demonstration, if I shift left click, I will be able to move the tile, I pick it up and move it. If I shift middle click, I make a selection of the tile and I can duplicate it without moving the original one. If I shift and right click, I will remove the tile. With that, you can work really quickly to make selections and drag assets and remove the one you don't want. The shift key has also another useful tool with the grid height. It allows you to slide any asset on the same plane, on the same height plane. So let's say I want to use that block there and I want to slide it across that gap. I will simply shift, pick it and then maintain shift again and as you see my grid height has changed. When I release shift the grid height comes back down again or comes back to the original point it was before I maintain shift. So now I will maintain shift again and as you can see I can move the asset on this height plane really easily and I can drop it there if I want. But this works at any height level so if I have this asset there but I want to put it between the two houses there is no grid height so it's a bit of a pain. I can just maintain shift and there you go. When maintaining shift, if you want to modify the grid height, you can use the wheel to put your asset higher or lower. This does not move the grid height, but this will allow you to fine tune where your asset is. You have to be cautious though, because as you see, sometimes your asset will go up if there is assets underneath. So you need to fine tune again with the mouse wheel to precisely put everything. This is all I had to show you for this first Telspire building tutorial. In the next one, we'll look at preparation and how to plan for your buildings. It will allow you to get better results in the long term. I hope you learned something today and if you have any question, please let me know. Have a good day.